I, we are here in Austin, Texas. So what are we here for? Yeah. Guys, we're at KetoCon. That's right. So it's more than you ever wanted to know about ketosis in a whole bunch of different ways. How many speakers are there here? Um, I'm going to say upwards of 30. There's got to be more than that. It's 30. Well, I don't know. 30 sounds right. Three full days, at least probably 10 speakers a day. Yeah. And it's been kind of uh, kind of interesting because there's no one solid keto. Like it's not, Everybody's got their own little teeny tweaks to it. So I think... I think there's going to be quite a few different people talking about it kind of a few different ways. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so who are you looking forward to the most? I have to be honest, I was geeking out quite a bit with Dave Feldman, <laughs> um, but I very much enjoyed uh, Dr. Uh, Bickman. Oh, yeah? So I was definitely looking forward to Brad Kearns, uh, and since I'm a Primal Blueprint certified and everything, he's kind of like one of those, I wouldn't say man crush, but one of those people I just can't wait to meet, so yeah. So, yeah. Was there any that surprised you? Um, no, not really. I mean, I think I was uh, kind of, ex- ex- most of the people you, we follow on social media, so we kind of knew. So the, the Keto Savage is somebody who was like a sleeper, knew nothing about that particular didn't do anything about the, pro, the the Instagram you know no research notes whatsoever and like the there was a panel basically uh, of all the the athletes there was six people and it was kind of like great to, to hear everybody's different opinions and stuff so he kind of stood out as a somebody that I, I now need to kind of look into yeah now he was my surprise I had never heard of him um, and oddly the day I left to come down to Austin, there was somebody posted on Facebook, and I watched a video that actually happened to be him and his girlfriend. Um, had never heard of him, didn't really know what he was about, wasn't really that interested in watching him this morning, but decided to do it anyway. He was the first speaker, and I have to tell you, completely impressed, absolutely amazed, and I will be looking into this guy. Yeah, I, I, I think so, too. So other than that, though, I mean, we're only halfway through, so there's still plenty of things to come. So you're kind of coming in on this. We've only seen about half of the folks. So, And uh, you can hear them in the background right now starting back up. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll uh, talk to talk about a couple of the vendors that we interviewed while we were here. Hey, guys. It's Jolene from the Ketonian Corner. We're here at KetoCon, and we found these great cookies. So I need for these guys to tell us what the deal is. The cookie company is called Keto Cookie, and I'm here talking with Victor and Chris. So, guys, tell me, how did this start? It starts with two guys wearing uh, their mom's apron in mom's kitchen <laughs> making cookies. Making cookies, yeah. So, so we went on a keto diet and just loved all the mental clarity, the energy that we were getting. And But we're like, hey, we miss sweets, so... Decided to go to my mom's kitchen and <laughs> bake up some cookies. Uh, tried 20 different the recipes. 20 or 30 different recipes. Yeah. yeah, and you know, found the one that we liked and we're like, oh, maybe other people might like this too. And yeah. I think what was unique too is we didn't approach it. We have no baking experience, so we didn't approach it like, how do we make this healthy cookie? It was we like cookies? How do we make something that fits our macros that happens to be healthy as well? Um, and then we ended up seeing if anybody would want it. So we put some feelers out on the internet, got a few sales. And then next week it jumped weeks that week after that, it jumped again. We were still buying all our product retail. So we were losing money on each order, but we knew we had something and that's where keto cookie was born. Nice. So what was your first flavor that you produced? Chocolate, Chocolate chip. chip. Our favorite. <laughs> okay. And so... How many flavors do you have currently available on the market today? So we have three flavors, chocolate chip, snickerdoodle, and double chocolate. And we're coming out with two more. So we've got peanut butter and we have a secret flavor. And those are going to be available for pre-order on September 12th. So uh, the big thing coming up is we're doing a big Kickstarter campaign. And that's to help us make keto cookies more available to to the masses. So right now we're... um, we're in a kitchen, a small kitchen, hand scoop, hand pouch, hand box, everything. Uh, we want the opportunity to be able to grow and deliver cookies to, to more people. Okay. And is this your full-time job now, or do you guys have daytime jobs as well? Uh, I mean, we have other jobs, but this is like our 80%. 80% of our time and our passion is yeah. keto cookie. Nice. Got to tell you guys, I have tried the chocolate, the chocolate chip, 
the peanut butter, and today I tried the snickerdoodle. They're phenomenal. You guys all have to go order this. So if I have people who are interested, where do they go to get these ordered? So you can go to ketocookie.com, cookie with a K. Uh, if you're interested in our crowdfunding campaign, it's ketocookie.com forward slash fan funding. No, I, wanted, I wanted to mic. start with we're on okay. the mic. Okay, you want to start with on the mic? Yeah. I like it. We'll start with on the mic. So <laughs> what are we on the mic for? I assume you're going to ask me questions about keto. Oh, keto. Is that why we're here at KetoCon? I think so. Okay. Well, you just gave a talk. What was your talk on? How did we start there? Uh, my talk was on either the sociology or the business of the ketogenic market, um, or the ketogenic community, I should say. Um, and we tried to look at the social science and uh, ask some questions about how big the market is, how big the community is, what the barriers are for people to find keto, choose keto, get going, stay on it, or refer a friend. Um, we did some uh, some estimates of the total number of people who are following keto in the United States, and we were really interested to learn that it was somewhere between 5 and 10 million people, or approximately the size of either the state of California on the low end or the state of Michigan on the high end. So we, uh, we're just trying to understand what's happening at the population level in the ketogenic community. So you did this whole survey, though, because you're supporting a company. So what's your company? So my company is Keto & Co. Uh, we are a manufacturer of ultra-low carbohydrate foods. Um, our mission is to have a ketogenic option for everything in the grocery store. And we're making some good progress with that. We have a couple of meal shakes right now, uh, rice broccoli and rice cauliflower that uh, are really good replacements under uh, either curry or tikka masala or something like that. We've got a hot breakfast, uh, brownies, and then a line of zero carbohydrate sweeteners that we call Truly Zero. Truly Zero. So what, which, which, uh, kind of, which way did you go first, or why did you start and decide you needed to look into this? So yeah, I, um, I started keto in June of 2014, um, more or less on a lark. I had a, uh, John Durant from the paleo community uh, as a friend of mine in college, and he was promoting, you should go paleo, you should go keto, it'll help with your chronic pain condition. And I was like, yeah, 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 no, there's no way a diet can be used as a treatment for an illness. And um, I, I didn't say no. I said, uh, wait till I have an open experiment slot. You know, we do we make changes every two months. We don't know what's wrong. Therefore, you know, if we don't wait every two months, we don't know if something's working or not. And I was, just, I said to him, I said, John, next time I have an open experiment slot, I'll try it. Okay, like I. I so you can't. you scheduled keto into your experiment schedule. <laughs> Uh, well, I he made the recommendation, and then I sat on it for <laughs> oh, almost two, two years. Oh, it was in the queue for two years. Two Before, years. like, there was just a scheduling mishap, and I couldn't get in to see my doctor. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, you know, I told John I the next time I had an open slot, I would run it, and I've got an open slot. And so I started keto, and about four days later, I was like, all right, I'm on this for a while, uh, because my pain went down substantially. Because of the inflammation? or I can't explain it. In um, only four days. If four days in, I was like, yes, I feel better. Wow. And my energy was going up. My pain was going down. I can explain the energy relatively well, but the pain is still kind of a mystery to me. And But for whatever reason, it worked. And uh, about six months into this, I into it, I was looking for what I was going to do next with my career. I put together 75 different things that I might want to do. Put them on little cards, and I like put them on my wall and reordered them. And... Um, Solving the problem with availability of keto food was the one that really resonated with me. It was the only card where I wrote the thing I was going to do, and then I had like seven different other More things. More like, like, oh, I'm going to do this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Yeah, uh, like mission, or you felt like you were kind of, felt like you'd get a lot of satisfaction out of doing that also? Yeah, I did. And I, so I, I was looking for the millennial trifecta. It needs to be something that's important to me. It needs to be something that is a big problem in the world, and it needs to be potentially profitable. And so, of the 75, about six met that criteria. And uh, keto was the one that I ended up going with because it was one that I had the most excitement for at the time. Yeah. Uh, and so, which, start, which product did you start with then? We started with our Keto One Shake. And I didn't have any experience in food. Um, I found in the other side of the state, there was a food safety course where they, you know, two days... 
uh, for two hours. They would run us through everything you need to know to make food safely. So I drove two hours out there to take a tour course and back two weeks in a row. Um, and I found a commercial kitchen and I made two years worth of the products. And what I reasoned was if I don't sell a single bag, I can literally eat the losses. And so there was, it was a no risk. Like I could try it, launch it. And if it failed, I'd actually be a little bit better off because I would have made the stuff industrially and I was already making it. And so I would have, so the economies of scale would have kind of, the, the economies of scale. Cause I would have said that was a risk yeah. doing that much all at once. But it's but I learned in the class there you go that because it's a powder product it's shelf stable for a very very long time so yeah. lower risk from that standpoint so even if it took me four years to eat it I would, could still make my way through All it right. and recruit my losses. so you basically got your emergency food supply back <laughs> down <laughs> yeah and then what'd you pick up uh, well so on that I made these two years not knowing what I was doing in food not knowing if we we're gonna sell it we sold that in five days and I had the longest December I've ever had in my life as we scrambled to scale up production, <laughs> hire people, um, get a supply chain in place. Good problem uh, to have. Yeah, and we've been uh, profitable and growing from retained earnings since month two. Um, wow, not a lot of people can say that. That's yeah. a really short runway. It is. Well, we had to be. Um, like, it, there, that Shoe was the string, only right? option we had, um, and so we were. Um, and then after that, we came out with actually um, a blended uh, oil product that we don't sell anymore. Uh, we're going to come back out on the market with it, uh, but we have to rename it. Um, the current name is not good, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. But the new name will be awesome once oh, we figure fantastic. out what that will be. It's just called blended oil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Something oil. Uh, and it's uh, the same blend of fat that's in our shakes, uh, except we're reformulated so you could cook with it. And we sold that at farmer's markets for about... Actually, a little more than a year, um, and we're just about to close that down before we rebrand it and come back out. About six months after that, um, we acquired the Keto Lent product. The guy who was making it decided to shut down, and I wrote him a frantic email saying, please don't shut down. We'll buy it from you. Uh, it turns out he was also in the Boston area. We met. Well, that worked we got out. Coffee. It worked out great. Uh, he's a great guy, Tim. Uh, we still get together once in a while. Um, so is that the only product that you bought to uh, relabel? No, we also uh, acquired the Keto Delivered subscription box about uh, nine months ago. And then filling in the trajectory between the purchase of Keto Delivered and the purchase of Keto Lent, we launched Keto & Company to house our grocery line of products. So uh, even though we're small and bootstrapped, we've made a few acquisitions and we're, we're making a pretty good dent so far. Well, fantastic. Well, I appreciate you uh, giving us some time to talk. Is there anything you want to kind of pitch or tell people where to go? Or Yeah, I would say uh, go to ketoandco.com and uh, take, a look at the, take a look at what's there. We've got a shake sampler that's a sample of our two taste optimized and one as natural as possible shake. And the Truly Zero sweeteners, uh, they're little half-ounce dropper bottles that have the equivalent sweetness of six pounds of sugar. And so they're great. I, I have one with me in my backpack at all times so that when I'm sweetening my coffee, I'm not getting those, you know, half a gram or a gram of carbs per packet. All right. Fantastic. Well, thanks. Any questions? I think you covered it. Thank you go. so much for Fantastic. talking to us. Fantastic. Well, Thank you. The time. And one of the boosts that surprised me is I came across a, a kind of nut I had never had before. So where exactly did you come up with this idea and where did you find it? Yeah, so this is, uh, it's called a Peely Nut, P-I-L-I. And uh, it's kind of a long story, but I've done a lot of traveling over the years. Used to be a mountain guide. I got injured. Um, then I got really into kite surfing because I couldn't climb mountains anymore. That took me all around the world. I was teaching it. I ended up in the north of the Philippines in this remote area. Someone handed me a peely nut, and I had never tried them, never heard of them. I tried, and I was like, oh, my God, we got to bring these back to the States. There was somebody selling raw ones, but we ended up sprouting them and bringing them back to the States. I brought 10 pounds back, bought a bag off uh, off the Internet, off of Uline, went to Craigslist, had a guy make me a sticker, put it on a bag, and that's how my company started. Wow. Yeah. So, so. Just so people can kind of understand, yeah. so uh, so if you, the closest thing I can think of is probably something like a uh, macadamia nut. Yeah, so it's like a macadamia nut, but even more rich. It's actually got more fat than a macadamia nut. 
uh, less carbohydrates in a macadamia nut. And these aren't monocrop like the macadamia nuts are. These are actually grown wild in the jungle. Uh, yeah. But, you know, people describe it between a mix between a pine nut, macadamia, pistachio, touch of Brazil. I don't even know. It's got its own distinct little thing going on, but it's hard to, it's sort of hard to describe. Definite, Rich, definitely buttery. Unique, right? Yeah. So you said raw. So when they're raw, what is it? Like, uh, how's it come? So it actually comes, it looks like a small avocado. It's a fruit. And then once you put, peel away that fruit, which is edible, by the way, uh, you take away that fruit, you get this hard shell. That, that you, it's, it's quite thick, you know, like almost like an eighth of an inch, inch thick. So they use a machete. And they open up these things by hand. And you get this one nut out of there. Uh, it's really this cool-looking hard shell. I don't know how to describe it, but um, a lot of people think it looks something like a Brazil nut a little bit. Awesome. Yeah. So you started with these nuts, but you've got a couple of different other things that you're kind yeah. of experiencing. So what are, what are they? Yeah, so in the quest to find more peeling nuts, I've been going to all these remote jungle regions in the Philippines. And that's how we changed our name to Peely Hunters. But... Uh, I found this wild honey. It's called Kiwat honey. It's a fermented stingless bee honey, and I'm the first one in probably the Western Hemisphere to actually sell this stuff. So it's it, I, the only way I can describe it is kombucha honey or apple cider vinegar honey. Because of the fermented piece? It's fermented, yeah. It's really cool, and it comes out of the hive like this, naturally fermented. So it's full of probiotics. It has, I think, don't quote me on this because I'm still trying to do research on it, but it has about a third to a quarter less the sugar content of regular honey. It does have a lot higher water content, but um, yeah, it's amazing stuff. It totally blow your mind. you got to try it. Also, we transitioned to some peely butter type stuff, some, some keto fuel. I used to spend a lot of time in the mountains outdoors. Now I'm fat and out of shape, but before uh, uh, I spent so much time in the mountains, we're kind of creating this as an outdoor packet take-along fuel. It'll be like an ounce, and you'll get, you know, 150 calories, 200 calories from this little tiny packet. So for bang for the buck for, like, adventure racers, mountain climbers, you know, anybody that's doing endurance stuff, this is going to be sort of your go-to fuel. Fantastic. So, Jason, going back to the nuts, you don't just sell the raw nuts. I mean, we talked about the raw nuts. But yeah. you got a couple of different yeah. different flavors. So, so yeah. how did you figure that one out? Yeah, so we got a couple of different flavors. We, we do a, a traditional, what we I call a traditional flavor. I'm the first one to do it. Um, we added uh, a little bit of salt, a little bit of coconut oil. That's my uh, my original recipe. Uh, there are some people that are trying to copy that. So if you see that somewhere else, it's a direct copy of mine. But anyhow, uh, we also do a spicy chili. We use a local Filipino chili. It's called Saling Labuyo. It's a tiny little chili that looks like a Thai chili. Um, it was once thought to be the hottest uh, chili in the world until they came to, to Central America and Mexico and found those peppers. But... Uh, yeah, so we add just a little bit of that. We're all we're really into the natural aspect. We're not trying to add any additives or, pardon my language, bullshit to the food. We're just trying to give an honest product. So that just has a touch of coconut oil and a touch of uh, natural chili. Then we also do the turmeric and black pepper. The black pepper, as you know, helps with the with the turmeric, makes it like a thousand times more bioavailable and activates those anti-inflammatory and the aspects that are good. Um, and then we're also doing a raw cacao. Uh, dusted peely nut with a touch of coconut sugar. I know people are bummed about the coconut sugar, but I don't really like stevia and all these other uh, na- uh, flavor sweeteners, so I don't like the way they taste. We may just do a straight c- raw cacao one, but um, yeah, and then we've got some other new flavors, and we've got some yeah, that, that peely fuel coming out, so that's about it for now, but we're working on a couple of other products as well. So if somebody was interested, what's your website? Eatpeelynuts.com. E-A-T-P-I-L-I-N-U-T-S.com. And, you know, just, man, I, I'm talking this big spiel. We're a small, I, I've never worked in the food industry in my life. Right. I'm just a guy that found this product and brought it back to the U.S. I'm not some, you know. And very unique. Yeah. Which is why I was. Yeah, I'm not some, you. you know, guy that, uh, I don't want to come off as like a sales pitch bullshit kind right. of story. Because it's just a product that I thought was amazing. I brought it back. I'd never had a company in my life. I've been a fisherman, construction worker, mountain guide. Shit, I've done everything. And, and yeah, so it just ended up with this company, and here I am. Fantastic story. Well, Jason, it was fantastic meeting you. All right on, man. Good to meet you. Thanks for coming by the booth.